Hello and welcome to Blender Bite Size. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make this material procedurally in Blender. Feeling lazy? You can support this channel and skip the hard work by grabbing the blend file for this material from Gumroad for just a pound. Feeling flush? Feel free to throw some of that coin my way using the coffee link in the description below the video. Okay, so I have my object loaded with my fabric already set up and a principled shader applied to it. I'm going to switch to rendered view in the viewport I'm using the cycles render engine with my GPU doing the processing. Just before I move on, I am basically going to double all of the light paths that I usually have set up. Now mine aren't always as high as everyone else's. I just find it renders quicker this way and doesn't make a huge difference for things like cloth or solid materials. Um, I am also going to go into the modifiers and these are the things that I usually use to set up cloth. Um, I've done a separate video about that so you can view that if you need to and basically you would make sure that these are set to 0 0.75, 0 0.75 and 0 0.5 and then in the cloth settings you would use this triple dot, uh, triple dot presets button to select silk and the settings have changed but this won't necessarily be updated because I basically have a current bake applied so we're going to delete that and then rebake this. Okay, and you can see there that it's now been updated. It's a much lighter fabric, so there's more drape to it. That is what we wanted. So now we can get on with creating the actual texture itself. So we'll start by pressing Shift A and then S and searching for a texture coordinate. Plug the object output into the base color. <coughs> then, oops, let's zoom in a bit. Then shift A and search for a Musgrave texture and put that just after the texture coordinate. Change the settings to 2, 2, 0.5 and 0.1. Next, search for and apply a mix RGB shader or node, but move the slot to color 2. Then we need a mapping node. We'll follow that with a math node. And change that to, actually no, it's already on add. Keep that at add and keep the value at 0.5. Then we need a Voronoi texture. Put that after the math node. Change the feature output to distance to edge and keep the settings as they are. Plug that back into the base color. Grab a color ramp, plop it in after the Voronoi texture. So basically this is going to apply color to the black and white version of this. Change the color mode to HSL and the color interpolation to FAR. Keep your black slider where it is and increase the value and saturation to one. Move the white slider to about 0.4, or well, I've got it at exactly 0.4, and then change the value to one, the saturation to one, and the hue to 0.999. That's basically full circle all the way around, so you get the full rainbow on the actual patterning. Now let's just go back and tidy this up a little bit. Blender likes to space these far apart. I like to keep them quite quite close together as it makes a bit more sense. Okay, next up, take the color from the color ramp and plug it into the metallic slot of the principal shader. 
add a noise texture, put it above the color ramp and plug the factor into the roughness of the principal shader. Increase the detail to 10 and the roughness to one and the distortion to 0.1. Connect this up with the texture coordinate via the object slot. And then in the principal shader itself, increase subsurface to one. Subsurface radius, change them all to one. Leave the subsurface color as it is. Specular, increase to one and transmission increase to point 0.2 so now you, you can see we've got nice metallic feel to it without it being a metallic glossy and that's kind of what you would get with a silk and we've also got by adding a little bit of transmission the translucency that you would get with silk as well and we're just doing that through the principled shader now, I don't think there's actually anything else there that I need to change. Nope, that's it. So that is what your node tree would look like. And that is what your fabric would look like. But let's render it out properly, uh, obviously using 512 samples, that, which is what, what I use as standard. I'm not activating the denoise feature because I find that makes it look a bit plasticky and I want the sort of distortion that you get. You can of course increase that if you want more uh, samples created. But let's see what we get. And there we have our psychedelic silk. It took just over a minute to process at 512 samples. So you could probably afford a few more samples if you've got the time during your render. But given that it's taken just over a minute, that's actually good for animations as well. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this and we'll give the video a thumbs up. And of course, subscribe before you go and hit the bell icon for notifications of future videos. I'm loving all the suggestions that are coming through, by the way, in the comments, so please keep those coming. If you have any requests for particular materials, I'm willing to have a go. Can't claim to be an expert, I'm just muddling my way through. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.